Hi! Welcome and good morning everyone. This is Lucy and we are live for you from China Media Group. Today we are so happy to take you through an amazing museum, the first national level museum of agriculture named the China Agriculture Museum. And I am in front of exhibition hall number two where we can see a history of China's farming and the advances. But before we start, I would like to do a sound check. First of all, please let me know if you can hear me. Please let me know if you can see me. And let me just say hi to a few people who are still here. Hi to you, Jesse. Hi to you, Kenny. Great to see everyone who's here. Again, my name is Lucy, and today we are going to talk to you all about the history of China's agriculture. First of all, I have a question for you. Do you have an agriculture museum where you, ha where you live? In, or in your country because I have been to many many countries in the world but it's the first time I know there's a museum devoted to agriculture. I've been to a lot of art galleries or history museum. First time I have been to an agriculture museum. Really, really excited. And before I go into exhibition hall number two to see many amazing artifacts, I have a poem to recite. This is a poem from an ancient poet in China named Li Bai. And the poem goes like this. The farmer works very hard in his field. Big drops of sweat comes out from him and drops into the field. Who knows all of the little tiny rice and grain come from all of the farmers hard work. So this is a poem from thousands of years ago in China, meaning that back then in China people already know how hard the farmers work every day to produce food for us, to produce cotton, so that comes to what we wear. Agriculture has always been very important in China. And in the past few days, my colleagues have already taken you to rice fields or farmers or shared farms in the suburbs of Beijing. And today, I'm going to take you into a museum to go back in history till now to go through the long history of China's agriculture, which date back eight to 9,000 years. So without further ado, let's come in. And let me see some more comments. Hi, Eric is here. Amazing to see you, Eric. Do you like agriculture? And how important do you think agriculture is in your life? Let me know in the comment section. Uh, we have Cape said, I can see and hear you. Thank you so much. Travis is here and Emma is here. Amazing to see everyone. It says pool here. So come in, come in, please, everyone. Come with me, and this is the amazing Agriculture Museum, Exhibition Hall number two. And I can see Steve is here saying hi as well. And hi. hi. Hello, Ni hao. Hello. Hello, so nice to see you. And guys, I can see a friend right here. Her name is Yi Ming, and she has a very interesting English name because her full name is uh, Zhu, Zhu Yi Ming. Her full name is Zhu Yi Ming. And when you say it very quickly, it becomes Zhu Yi Ming, Zhu Yi Ming, and it becomes similar to Dreaming. Dreaming. So <laughs> she has a very interesting English name, Dreaming. And you can say hi in the comment section, say hi Dreaming oh. or happy Dreaming, and we will bring you some very nice uh, content just like Dreaming. And let's come in to talk about what the statues behind us is about. So, dreaming. I have a question for you. What is all these statues meaning? Uh, let's see. These five ones, they are legends and ancestors wow. of Chinese five. people. Mm -hmm. uh, it was say that these five persons, they made great contributions to agricultural development in China. In China. Uh. So you said, uh, dreaming said there are five people, five mythical figures back in Chinese history that had important um, contribution to the Chinese family. Let me guess, the first one looks like he's holding sort of like uh, a, what is he holding? <laughs> it's uh, actually it's a fishing net. Oh, a fishing net. Yeah. And what's his name? Uh, he, the, this man's name is Fu Xi. Fu Xi? Yeah. Wow, so you guys remember Fu Xi, F-U-X-I. Fu Xi is this guy's name, and he is sort of like the god of fishing. Uh, yeah, he mm. invented the fishing, wow. fishing net. And some people to 
raise animals. Wow, so he invented fishing, amazing. And so if we go from left to right, the second one, the very tall person. His name is Shen Nong. Shen Nong, oh, I think I've heard of him, Shen Nong. <laughs> if you guys have heard of him, let me know in the comment section. And thank you so much for uh, tuning in. We are from China Media Group. Today we're talking about China Agriculture Museum. So tell me please, Dreaming, who is he and what does he do? He cultivated all kinds of strength oh. and uh, taught people to do the farm work. Wow, so he's also like a teacher who teaches people how to do farm work back in the days. Amazing, thank you. And who the should we talk about next? The man in the middle? He farm. looks like an emperor because yeah. of his um, hat. And what does he teach? Uh, actually, he, uh, uh, he creates the characters. Oh. and establish the legislation. Wow, so in farming, it's not only important to know how to grow plants or grow grain or fish, it's also very important to have a good legislation so that we can regulate farming. That is what I think his name is Huang Di, is yeah. it? Yeah, Huang That's Di. what Huang Di was doing. And this lovely lady, the only <laughs> lady figure in the statue. <laughs> She's wife of Huang Di. Ah, she's the wife of Huang Di, and I can see that she's holding like a fruit plate. No, but no. is it a fruit plate? No, it's not. Uh -huh. It's uh, some silkworms. Silkworms, wow. So the yes, cocoons. I can see uh, uh, all of, of these are worms. cocoons. So could I guess that she taught people how to weave? Yes, actually. Wow, amazing. So I want to thank her for the clothes that I'm wearing today. <laughs> because if you didn't teach people how to weave, I wouldn't be wearing nice clothes. <laughs> Amazing. So what do you guys think about these five? Oh, sorry, I forgot one person. Sorry, sorry, brother. What does he do? Uh, his name is Da Yu. And, oh, uh, yes. He led people to mm. struggle against the flood and won wow. the battle. Wow, amazing. So yes, I think every um, other child who grew up in China or went to school in China would have heard of the story of Da Yu, who went to um, fight against the huge flood back in the days and coming past his home oh. but didn't go in for several times. Very devoted man. So all of these five mythical figures who actually happened in history um, and we were talking about the history of Chinese agriculture wouldn't be nice to start from all these five statues. And let me just quickly check your comments. We have so much interesting content for you today. Don't go away and stay tuned for more of the interesting artifacts from Dreaming. We have Jimmy said hello Lucy. Thank you so much. Remember to say hello to Dreaming as well. We have William <laughs> from Massachusetts, USA. Thank you so much. We are right now in Beijing, China. It is a Thursday morning in China. Let me know where are you from, which part of the world you are from, where are you watching, and let me know how is the weather in your area, because weather is very important for agriculture. And um, William is from Massachusetts. You can let us know if farming is a big industry over there where you live. And we have Trevor said hi. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much, Trevor, for saying hi to our lovely guide, Dreaming. We have Sean, who here, amazing to see you. And we have Juan said hola, hola back to you as well. So right now in here, I can see it's sort of like a wax museum, La <laughs> Xiangguan, sort of like a wax museum, really interesting. So many uh, real life figures and I can't wait to find out what they all represent. Dreaming, these people, they look like the people from very old thousands of years back. What are they doing over here? What is this trying to show? Please let me know. They are primitive people in the oh. Neolithic age. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Neolithic uh, age. Yeah, this rel uh, this thing recreates the relics of Hemudu relics, mm -hmm. and about. 7,000 years ago. 7,000 years ago. So this would be the very start of farming in mm -hmm. China. And I think this really tells a good story. I don't know if the camera can pick up. This looks like the father of the yeah. family and yeah. he's holding like a deer. Yeah. And um, the mother is teaching the two child how to um, weave something or... I think she mm. is doing the weaving. Oh, she is doing the <laughs> weaving for the child. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the children are too young to learn. Yeah. Yes, I'm pushing them too hard. <laughs> so it, I can see like a lovely story. The father um, is holding the capture of the day and says, Hi kids, hi wife, look, we have meat for tonight's dinner. Yeah. <laughs> sort of like that. Oh, it's so really interesting. Life is, life is not very easy. <laughs> yeah, life is not very easy, but with the whole family stick together, always very happy. And um, 
um, I think from this, my takeaway would be even though back 7,000 years ago, agriculture has already started yeah. in some parts of China and people already started to go some, do some hunting or weaving. Really? But back then, I don't think they keep animals, not yet. Some time they will yang dong, right? In this part, not really. In this part, mm. not. That's okay. So let's keep going and let me quickly check. Do you want to see these seeds? Also found in the red. Again, very happy to see you. And also, we have Max, Mark Maxwell, saying hi to everyone. Thank you so much. And we have um, William here as well. So, Dreaming was telling me that she wants to show me some seeds from 7,000 years ago. So, let's follow her and have a look. Seeds from, wow, look yeah. at this. They look like sesame, they look like jima. <laughs> <laughs> let's go in and have a quick, uh, let's have a closer look. Yeah, these Please are some cultivated rice seeds and when they were found in the relics, uh -huh. the color was golden. Oh. But because of the oxidation, they turned black little by little. Oh, wow. So those seeds were discovered um, um, and they are from 7,000 years back. Yes. Oh, wow. So it's f so very interesting to see that these seeds are from the ancient times and they're rice seeds and we still eat rice up till this day. Let me know in the comment section if you love eating rice and how you usually cook it. And today we are going through history to talk about the development of the Chinese agriculture. And which brings me to this sort of uh, nicely created thing right here. Dreaming, what are these two people doing? They look like a couple and they look like they're picking up some fruits. Yeah, they're what picking is this up some telling fruits. us? This relic reflects the Banpo relics of Shanxi province, oh, Shanxi province. about uh, mm -hmm. 6,000 years ago. 6,000 years yeah. ago, And wow. they are Banpo mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. Wow. They can uh, grow grains uh -huh. by polished stone tools. Mm -hmm. They hunted and fished by bone arrowhead. Wow, and looks good. <laughs> because if you can see, this guy is holding a spear and on the pointy head, um, looks like he's already um, learned how to sharpen his tools yes. to make sure that he can catch more things. So let's keep going because we have so many interesting content to show you. And I think, wow, I can see right there, three people working together, sort of like um, going in the same direction. What do you think they're doing right there? They're doing uh, farm work with the simplest plow. Ooh. These are the oldest plow, plow people invented. Ah, mm. so they would be plowing the land. And why are they going three in a row, three people together? Uh, it's a teamwork. Oh, <laughs> amazing. So looks like before um, people invented machines to do farm work in China, people already started to do a lot of nice teamwork, just like me and Dreaming today, <laughs> doing a teamwork to tell you about the interesting content in this a huge museum. And I was um, going to tell you before I forget that this agriculture museum actually opened for public in 1986 and it is the national level museum of agriculture in China. So if you want to learn anything about Chinese agriculture, come, come to here. this museum. And we have something in this. Is there some artwork in, uh, made of bronze or iron? Uh, these are some iron. Oh, ah, wow. So these mm. are some iron harrow or some plowshare. Very cool. You and mm, yeah. wow. So let's go this way. And yeah. I can see, wow, some kettles right here. <laughs> but oh, so maybe during this time, people already started to keep farm animals. But let me know, Dreaming, which year was this? Or how many years ago was this from? It's in the Han Dynasty, about oh, 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. People started to use cattle. 
in the farm ah, work. Wow. Mm. So 2,000 years ago in China, people already learned how to use cattle in farm work. And let me know if you've been to a farm in your country or around the world, do people use cattle? Uh, have you seen cattle being used? Or have you actually used cattle in farm work yourself? Let us know. And something interesting, so this guy, looks like his job is the leader. He's sort of holding the cattle by their noses and he's leading them. Yeah, direction. So, direction. So this guy is the director. And the guy in the middle, if you look very closely, it looks like he's sort of sitting on the plow. What does he do? He controls the depth of the plow into the soil. Wow. So is he sitting? Oh, wow. And this guy, um, Jeremy was telling me that he sits in on the plow and the more he sits, the deeper the plow will go into the field. So he controls the depth, direction, depth. And this guy at the back, what does he do? He holds, just the holding. <laughs> <hand. Just> hold. <laughs> <laughs> That's very interesting because back then we saw three people. And it's still three people here, but they have very different functions now and very uh, and more advanced than before. And this guy is just this looking or? Uh, no, he <laughs> is a government official ah. uh, in agricultural right. named Zhao Guo. And Zhao Guo. he is teaching these people to do the ah. advanced farm work mm -hmm. he uh, found. Oh, so he discovered this? Yes. Wow. So this government official, he um, is uh, the inventor of uh, the function of yeah. how to use cattle um, to plow the land. Um, which brings me to another point that is over thousand years back in China, the government has always placed high priority in uh, agriculture advances. So back in the years, you can see this government official wearing the long robes. He's teaching people how to um, farm using the new farm tools. But right now, during the two sessions which opened last week in China, um, the agriculture discussion is still very hot and people are saying that we will want to place agriculture still on the top priority and also to help rural areas to become better off. So now I can see a very interesting tool. I want the camera to have a look at this and I was wondering if you guys can guess what this is. From the plate, he says it's an animal drone seed sowing plow. Dreaming, I'm sure you have more to tell us about. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually er the earliest uh, uh, planter. The earliest. Uh, wow. And invented by Zhao Guo. Oh, just so invented in China. Amazing. Yes. And let me just guess, the seed will go here? Yes, uh, there are three hollow pipes connected oh. to this box. Wow. And uh, when, we put, uh, when we do farm work, mm -hmm. we put seeds into the box and we push it. Then it can do digging and uh -huh. uh, meanwhile the seeds can do go down along the pipe wow. and at last to spray to the ground. So it's like... Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The wow. earliest uh, mm. planter in uh -huh. the world, at least in China. At least in China. Mm. Wow, that's so lucky for me to see the earliest type of plant in China. And it goes, the seed goes here and then the, um, the, the three hollow pipes. It's, uh, the actual principle is very similar to mm. the machine that we use today and it's invented 2,000 years ago. Just quickly check your comments. We have Eric saying, um, thank you so much for the information. As always, you are most welcome. That is what we're here to do. And we have Gregory said, I eat a lot of rice. Wow, <laughs> welcome, a rice lover here. And he said, I eat it in different ways, sometimes with beans, eggs, or soy sauce. Amazing. We love any gastronomy in our channel. And talking about eating, I can see so many different figures rings right here. Some yeah. looks like they're eating, but not always. For example, this big one, Dreaming, you had a story to tell me about him or her. Yes, this is a, a tomb figurine. A uh, tomb figurine, yeah, so it's placed in a tomb. Yeah, unearthed from Sichuan province in the ah. Han Dynasty 2000 wow. years ago. Ooh. And um, you know, uh, you can see that he is holding two farm farming tools in his hands and around his waist uh -huh. there is a sword. Mm -hmm. And so it tells us that he is a farmer and a soldier at the same time. Oh, mm. so he's a farmer and a soldier. Is, it, um, is this very common back then that someone can be a farmer and a soldier at the same time? Yes, mm. uh, uh, if at that time, if uh, farming is very busy, he yes. can cultivate and uh -huh. if wars broke out, he can fight. 
Wow. <laughs> so a very um, multitasking person. Um, usually in time of peace, he will just do the farming and yeah. feed his family. But when war breaks out, which happens quite often back then, he just goes to fight. And I can see all of the details are so vivid. Mm -hmm. And you were saying that it's from 2,000 years ago. Very. Um, it, it's also one of the most uh, treasures in our museum. Oh, amazing. Good <laughs> to see. And we have Betty here. Amazing. Hi, Paul. Amazing to see you. And um, um, Betty is saying those 3D models are, are these 3D models and paintings behind you? No. These are actually unearthed actual artifacts, relics unearthed from tombs 2,000 uh, years ago. So very true um, figures right here. And from talking about tomb, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I can see is this also um, unearthed from a tomb before? Yes, this is a pottery toilet. <laughs> <laughs> When Dreaming was telling me about it, it's really interesting. It's a toilet, and I can see that it's sort of like the separate uh, male and female yeah. are already in separate places. Yeah. Uh, so uh, on the top is the toilet, and um, the shape of the roof is also very interesting mm -hmm. for me to see. So I think the camera can go through all of this on earth from the tomb, and um, all related to agriculture. And um, Let's just quickly go to see that Glenn is here watching us. Thank you so much, Glenn. And today, the reason we're coming to the China Agricultural Museum is we really want to give you a good storyline to go through the eight to 9,000 years of development of Chinese agriculture and see how we come from a nation of good agricultural resources and um, a lot of farmland to now a very advanced agriculture nation. China already ranks the world's first in production of cereal, rice and fish and cotton. How did we do this and how did China feed 21%, 1.4 million people, 21% of the world's population with less than 10% of the world's arable land. An amazing achievement in itself. How did we do this? The Agricultural Museum can have part of the answer. So right now, over here behind me, I can see a pear tree. Yes, and it's a pear tree. What is this guy doing? Uh, he is uh, doing the research of, uh, about pear tree grafting. Oh, mm. so back then, um, how many years ago was this? 1,400 years ago mm. in the Wei Jing Dynasty. Wow, so back then the grafting technique has already been discovered yes. by this guy. And um, mm. Jia Sixie. Jia Sixie, his mm. name is Jia Sixie, and he is uh, sort of researching on how to graft a pear tree. And you can see a pear <laughs> <laughs> falling on, on the uh, It's not ground. real. <laughs> not real. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it wouldn't be real. <laughs> so, really interesting. Um, and it gave me a lot of reflections because we started from we were saying He Mu Du or Ban Po, mm -hmm. all of the primeval areas and in Neolithic age, mm -hmm. how um, all these people are just wearing um, not very fancy clothes and they were just doing some weaving and hunting to feed the, their belly. And afterwards, we had people uh, developing or inventing tools to yes. farm. And then they brought in kettles to help them. And then they had more scientific uh, ways of um, grafting trees to make um, the food more juicy and um, edible and more yummy, so, uh, which is all very good. And we went through 5,000 years of development already, and um, I can see some interesting tools right here. Um, Jeremy, did you want to tell me more about this? These three ones, uh, they, they are rec recorded in the book named uh, Qi Min Yao Shu, written by that man, oh, Jia Sixie, wow. and uh, it reflects a dry land farming system. A dry land farming system. And, and these are three tools used in the system mm -hmm. in, in, in farming. And this one is Li, Ba, mm -hmm. Mo. And people wow. use Li for digging. So this is the plow for digging. Yeah, and, and this is a harrow. harrow for mash the soil. Oh, mashing, mashing the soil. Mashing it. Yeah. Nice. And at last, uh, Mo. We oh. use it for making soil flat. 
Oh, making them flat, amazing. And when I came to the museum to have some research myself, Dreamy was telling me that all of these tools are not particularly made for the museum. They were actually just collected from yeah. um, actually average um, farming houses. So people were really using these tools to do um, their farming yeah. and they were um, now collected in the museum. Really good to know. So you can imagine farmers' hands actually touched all of this and they used it for years. So just take a quick break and um, see your comments. And Glenn was saying that I love learning about other cultures. It enriches us in so many ways. Thank you so much, Glenn. And this is exactly what we're doing here today. We want to learn about the um, culture of China's agriculture and the civilization, and also passing what we've learned to you today. And speaking of which, I can see this fruits and vegetables, fruit and vegetable box. And why do we have, like, we have cucumber, we have grapes, we have green onion, we have tomato, everything that I love to eat every day. <laughs> but why do we have this here, Dreamy? Uh, because uh, this, these showcases show these mm -hmm. uh, fruits or vegetables are intri introduced from foreign countries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really? Wow. So Dreamy was saying that all of these fruits and vegetables that we eat every day are not originally from China. They were, invent, uh, they were imported <laughs> from yeah. other countries. Wow. No, that not imported, but introduced. introduced, yeah. introduced. At that time, we did not pay money to. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you are right. Thank you so much for correcting me. <laughs> so, wow, that's so good to know because uh, especially potatoes. Mm -hmm. I love eating potato toast. <laughs> we eat them every day and it's so good. Fried to potatoes? Yeah, fried potatoes, <laughs> sliced potatoes. Oh, my mouth is watering already. <laughs> so it's so good. And also, uh, the China's national dish is uh, like a Korean way to say it. Um, t uh, scrambled eggs and tomato. I've even introduced yeah. it to a lot of my foreign friends how to cook it. So it's amazing to know that um, back then, how many years ago would this be? Hundreds? Several hundred years ago? Or? Mm, Ming and Qing Dynasty. Ming and Qing Dynasty. Cool. Oh. So we, uh, it's so good to see that in agriculture, um, there are a lot of exchange between countries. Just like how we do a lot of people-to-people -people exchange today, all very important for the prosperity of our lives. And coming from here, I can see this is another, I guess, kettle, but this actually has different homes yes. to the ones that we saw before. Is this water buffalo, or can you yes. tell me about this? Uh, it's, it, this thing reflects the southern part of China, and ah, uh, the, the southern people are doing the farm work, right. and uh, you can see these are rice fields. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why do people come to the southern part of China to do farming? Uh, about in the Tang and Song dynasty, about mm -hmm. 1,400 years ago, North China occurred wars frequently, right, right. and South China relatively were relatively peaceful, so yes. large amounts of people, they uh -huh. moved from the south to, uh, from the north to the south. Wow. And then settled down, mm -hmm. and then rice quickly became the second largest food stable in China besides wheat. Oh, wow. So before in the northern part of China, people mostly eat wheat. Mm -hmm. And now in the Tang Dynasty, um, rice become the second yes, uh, most largest important, food stable. largest food stable. Amazing to know. And uh, if you can see the background in, on the photo, on the wall, there were actually rice paddies. And if you remember our live stream um, in the past, we have been to many rice paddies to um, grab rice or catch fish, many things that we do here. And and is this a tea garden? Yes, it's a tea. Uh, it's a tea. Or maybe people a tea are house. drinking tea. Yes, people tea are house. drinking tea. <laughs> oh, amazing to know. Tea at that time quickly become our national drink. Oh, so back then, thousands of years ago, tea already become a national drink. Thank you. That's so many. Uh, so good to know. We have um, Emma said the indigenous people. Um, from Peru invented potatoes. Wow, that is so good to know, oh, Emma. Peru. Wow. And um, we have um, Jesse was saying, how and Kenny had a question, how far back does the equipment go? So I think Kenny was talking about those three equipment that we mm -hmm. talked about before. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how long of history do you think they have? Thousand of years or, or hundreds? One thousand years. One thousand years. Mm -hmm. So Kenny, one thousand years. And, ooh. Interesting. Yeah. Can you guess what <laughs> it is used for? We, Dreamy and I, we wanted to challenge you guys watching from home. Um, do you know what this is? 
the sort of round object and all of these grass <laughs> all of these grass can anyone tell us in the comment section what do you think they are and what do you think their function is in the comment section and we can't wait to see your answer and while you are busy concentrating doing this we might look at some other things in this exhibition box we have this is the farming tool to protecting protect yeah protecting tool to protect the face Oh, to like a face mask. Yes, yes. Oh, interesting. And <laughs> which uh, gives me the segue. We both are not wearing face masks today because um, in Beijing we have a really good control ma measure and um, it's very safe right here. That's why we didn't wear masks today inside the museum to give you a better sort of um, uh, explanation so you can see our face expressions. And this is a thumb tool for protecting the arms. Mm. Wow. So so I can see this is all about protection and I'm dreaming. Do you have any clues to give our audiences of um, when they were guessing what these are? It's a uh, clothes made of grass. Oh, and, uh, mm. it's made of grass. Mm -hmm. And when do people usually wear this? Uh, in uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so Jimmy was uh, saying that we can't tell people when this were where uh, when people would wear this. Otherwise, it's so easy for you to get. But in a not very mm. good weather day. Okay. <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for helping the audience without telling them too much. So let me just see quickly. Ah, oh, Dennis was saying the shade hat and a cloak. Cloak. And um, Sean was spelling to us in um, pinyin to say mouth mm. and um, Eric was saying that this is the first frisbee <laughs> thank you sir it's good humor <laughs> so dreaming now we can reveal the answer what are these actually what are these objects actually are uh, these are a mm. suit of raincoat oh raincoat yay and so that time we, we, did, we did not have plastics that's right <laughs> <laughs> and still um, it's so would, would say organic and very good for the environment, not plastic. And um, the hat is not a frisbee, but a hat, like a rain hat um, for farmers when they were doing farm work yeah. during uh, raining times. And the grassy things are actually not a big uh, a shining um, coat or fashion statement. <laughs> it's, it's a rain coat uh, back in the days. Very good to see. And um, if you go to the southern part of China, you might still see photos uh, back in the days of people wearing this. In Mandarin, uh, the hat in Chinese, what's it called? In Mandarin, Chinese, how do you say that? Hat. Hat. And the coat in Mandarin is. So yi. So yi. Oh, it should be. So yi and dowli. Dowli. So yi dowli. Very good. Uh, very good names in Mandarin as well. So let's go into the other areas because we have so much to see. I, I ran coat and a hat, said Gregory. Yes. Are you surprised? The earliest raincoat and the earliest hat. And Sean was saying, xie xie. You are most <laughs> welcome. And thank you so much for um, communicating us with pinyin as well. Any languages, or oh, not any language, English, pinyin, or Mandarin. <laughs> a little bit of Spanish, maybe. And I can see a lot of books written in Mandarin for any of your Mandarin learning lovers. Um, can you tell us, dreaming about all of this and the scene behind? Uh, these are some. Uh, these these books are, are about uh, silk silk worm feeding. Oh, uh, I can tell weaving. because the photo or the hand drawn sketch. Yes, is these all people about are feeding silk worms. Mm -hmm. Oh, so that must be um, outside. There's a big statue, and this is uh, the wife of uh, Huang Di. What was her name again? Lei Zu. Lei Zu. So she was the um, teacher of um, the ancient, ancient China people. weaving. And uh, this is about weaving as well. So people were good students to her. <laughs> yeah, to make so silk clothes. Making silk clothes. China wow. is a silk country. Yes, that's mm. right. Wow, silk clothes. And um, if you guys know, we've traveled through the Silk Road, which is an ancient trade road um, in China uh, with all the other countries. Um, and uh, along the Silk Road, and the silk started from here as well. And these people are talking about silk or something else. Mm -hmm. This man is Xu Guangqi. He is also a government official. Uh -huh. He is introducing new variety of crops to farmers. Ooh. Mm -hmm. So he's telling farmers some mm -hmm. new type. Oh, of these crops grow very well. You <laughs> should plant it. <laughs> <laughs> 
So here reminds me of um, nowadays we have the concept of first secretary or Di Yi Shu Ji um, because this um, f- f- um, China has placed huge effort in um, poverty elevation, helping people in rural areas lifting out of poverty. Actually, since two 2020, China's already lifted. Um, absolute people from rural areas from absolute poverty by the hard work um, of a lot of very hard working local officials and he this official really reminded me of the current hard working um, government officials local secretaries that we have today that they always tell people this is something good you should do, and you should send your children to school or we should um, pave this road to make the road better for you to go to work. Amazing and as we work backwards, <laughs> let me quickly see, Glenn um, Cartwright is saying that I do enjoy museums. Thank you so much sir and this is my first time in an agriculture themed museum. Everything about agriculture and um, this museum opened in 1986 to the public. There are a lot of different exhibition halls. This one is about the history and we have another one about soil, another one about tools and Dreaming has, how many years have you worked in the museum? Seven. Seven years. She's worked here for seven years. So you're in very good hands. Any questions about agriculture in China or about this museum, you can ask Dreaming and by typing her very interesting English name, mm-hmm. Dreaming. I wish I could have an English name like this. <laughs> oh, this is a um, agriculture wow. tool and um, tell us about this Dreaming. What are they and what do they do? Uh, these are flowers we collected from the uh, north part of China. Northern part of China, yeah. yes. Oh, wow. And um, so this part is the part that you hold with your hands? Yes. Especially this one, I can see that this one has been used for many times because you can already see it's shining, means that people might have um, uh, grabbed it on the hand for a very long time. These are some blades. Ah, some blades. And the blades are all very sharp on the pointing head. Yeah, uh, um, the earliest blade Mm. is not made of uh, iron. The earliest uh, may be made of stone, stone. wood, mm-hmm. or uh, and then bronze, at yes. last iron. Oh, so bronze. Yes, of course, because in the Neolithic age or the Shang Dynasty in China, uh, some of you might have uh, been with us to the Sanxing Dui Museum. You might remember the bronze was, the bronze age was um, uh, uh, quite big in that area and people were doing a lot of things with bronze. Mm-hmm. And this is uh, the iron head, uh, yeah. the more current one. And I can see that all of this um, heads or mm-hmm. blades, they're pointing down, down. down. they're point, pointing downside, very interesting. I remember that because there's a question for you there again. So this is pointing down, this is also pointing down. But if we go over to this side, you might see something quite different. Yeah. We have Steve said, interesting Lucy, thank you so <laughs> much. Yes, I am intrigued. Oh, you can see all of these um, heads were pointing sort of curling up. This is curling up, this one is as well and they're all made of iron, is that right? Yes, iron. And it is pointing sort of curling up as well. So I have, I think Dreaming, of course Mm -hmm. she knows the answer, but we both have a question for you. Why on this side of the museum all of the plow, the head is pointing downwards, but all of here is pointing up? So please let me know in the comment section why are these um, two sets of thumb towards the plow, the heads are pointing in different directions. And when, you, when we are waiting for your answer, we are going to check your previous comments. And um, Eric is saying that um, I totally agree, we are a comparatively young country here in the US and we can learn so much from other countries with their rich and ancient countries. Thank you so much for being so open-minded and love to learn and dreaming here with her excellent English. She has received a lot of um, guests in this museum from overseas. Dreaming, can you tell me um, you've, um, in how many different countries of guests have you um, met before? Can you list some countries? of guests that you accompanied. 就是你和其他哪些国家的客人, 接待过哪些其他国家的客人? 好多了。你可以说说。So many. Mm, uh, so many. 哥鲁吉亚。Uh, 
Most from African countries mm. and um, also in Europe, amazing to know. And um, any um, from the US or UK, America, India, Australia? Uh, mm, not mm. many, so you guys next time <laughs> <laughs> you, you know who to ask for for a good tour in English of the Agriculture Museum. Yay, Vincent. Um, Vincent, I have to say that um, not only do I want to thank you for your good answer, your um, profile photo with the hat looks like the farmer's hat in China as well. <laughs> <laughs> so Vincent is saying, um, are these different pointing heads for plow and to till? Mm. And um, Paul is asking, is Dreaming an anthropologist or a museum uh, staff? So Dreaming is actually the manager of the learning and teaching section of this museum and she um, very often receives um, people from overseas or outside of the museum and telling them all about the Chinese agriculture. We're very ha lucky to have her today. So it's time for our big reveal of the answer. Why are these two heads pointing differently? Because they are collected from different parts of China. Mm -hmm. The left uh, side ones are yes. collected from North China and uh -huh. the right ones are collected from South China. So why would in the north the head will be pointing down and in the south it will be going up? Uh, because of the difference of soil conditions. Ah, the difference mm -hmm. of soil conditions, amazing. And? Uh, and that's very interesting to know. And also, um, we can see all of these stilts um, looking in the different uh, shape shapes as um. well and also from different locations too. Yeah. Because of time, let's um, quickly move on to the next uh, section. Mm -hmm. I think there's something because all of this museum um, we have many artifacts which is very hard for us to touch. For example, we have the grinder, the ancient Chinese grinder right here. If you love drinking coffee, remember when in China the millstone? the millstone was the first type of grinder um, that is being used, invented by uh, the ancient craftsman named Lu Ban. And I was saying that a lot of these museum exhibits, we can't actually touch them. However, over here, we have prepared something that we can actually engage and interact. And this is a... Um, Wow, and amazing, they've already taken out <laughs> the um, barrier outside. So Dreaming, please show me how you play with this. <laughs> uh, let's show, sh show this one. I'll show this one first. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll stand on this side. Uh, this is a food processing This is really cool, guys. Play tool, for it. Uh, powered by water oh. instead of human power. Right. And uh, we put half of it into the water, mm -hmm. and then we open it. Oh, oh watch out. sorry. <laughs> We open this gate and then water came in, uh -huh. turned the big wheel wow. and then the big wheel drive can drive these nine mills, millstones wow. to work. So one water wheel can drive nine mills, that's so good. And you can see comparing to what we saw, the hunting, and now it's very advanced compared to the um, uh, relics we saw 8,000 years ago. And do we show this or do we yeah, look everyone. at this one first? <laughs> Oh, is there some water hammer? We use mm -hmm. it to hot rice. Water hammer. I want to try this one myself. So <laughs> this one, I think. Yes. Ah. Like so water will drive the water well. Mm -hmm. And water is much better than me. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Wow. And then the um, millstone will be grinding the uh, the grain or the rice. And here, Dreaming, you can have a go. Is there a large water hammer? Wow! We use it to hot rice. I want to try. I want to try. <laughs> rice bowl, dumpling. Ah! It's very interesting because when you were pushing this, the four sort of um, drums, they actually go in order. So one, two, three, four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very good design. I love it. So guys, we're having so much fun here and and there's something more interesting that I wanted to show you. I have friends in Sichuan 
province, which is the home of Panda in southwestern China. And my friends in Sichuan were telling me that they are now learning from the China Agriculture Museum. They are now trying to build a huge agriculture complex also in that part of China to show people how many different things and achievements of agriculture there is in the Yangtze River area. So I want to now invite my friend from Sichuan to uh, bring us a short clip showing people, showing you guys of course how the construction of the agriculture park is going in that area. So Sichuan, what have you got? Let's have a look. Hi everyone, I am Panda Reporter Jiang Nan. I'm Panda Reporter Ju Jia Wen. And today we are at the China Tianfu Agricultural Expo. And here we are going to explore the venue, which is also the permanent venue of the China Agricultural Expo. Okay, let's go. So welcome to our site. So this exciting project, after like six months, it's going to be totally built. So it's a very sustainable design. It's the whole concept is not to enjoy the farm. The whole concept is like this agriculture expo going to be sitting on the ground in the farm, becoming a part of the the, the whole environmental stuff. Something like Harmony. that. Yeah. Mr. Han said by finishing this project, we hope to attract more people like from all over the world to enjoy, to experience agriculture and uh, the farm from it. Tianfu Agricultural Expo is the permanent venue of Sichuan Agricultural Expo and also the planned area is 129 square kilometers and it is one of the 66 functional areas of industry in Chengdu and also the final picture of the whole project is going to show the rural revitalization and uh, also the rural life in Chengdu. So I see there's lettuce growing here. What is it for? These lettuce could be grown without soil and you can even control the temperature and the climate here. And the nutrition. Yes. So you can actually grow anything. Yeah. So interesting that the fish doesn't does not need to be Right. Intentionally fed. Oh, yeah. so it gets the nutrition from the plants. Yes, the plants and get the nutrition. Yeah, vice versa. Very nice. So after a five-minute walk and across the street, we run to, into what is this? I think it looks like a park. Why don't we ask the experts? Cool, let's go. Here we have actually six types of homestays, and uh, the visitors here, you can come here to pick the vegetables here, and also a part of the vegetables would be supplied to the restaurant here, and that. House with the, the yeah that greenhouse is for more tropical plants yeah tropical plants great after our tour today I really feel like we were walking in pictures right and actually the tourists they could bring their families here to enjoy the scenery as well as the harmony with nature here right so we'll be waiting for you here in Xinjiang Tandu at the Camp for Agricultural Expo. Thank you so much, Dreaming, for all of the, the very good information and very interesting information you were telling us. And I was so interested and intrigued by the northern and southern differences. But now, we have now gone into exhibition hall number four. And I am standing in front of this huge sort of iron machinery and very different from the wooden one. So, heads that we saw in hall number two. So, so um, I'm guessing this exhibition hall, maybe we are talking about the modern age or the industrial age of China's yes. agriculture, but I can see something that tells me this machine might not be from China. Yes. I want to ask Remy, tell us about this machine. Is it from China? Why or why not? It's not a... Uh, it's a China machine. This is from Japan and Ooh. we can see the... Wow. It's a Canadian implement for tea, and at that time, China tea people. Ah. Most of them are handmade and mm -hmm. uh, market. Uh -huh. So, to this machine to ah. solve the problem. 
about. So back then in China before the industrial era, are very good, but it's always sort of like a workshop and by workshop. However, this um, machine is allowing us to have a huge manufacture by steaming the tea and making more products to sell to all the other countries. And I can it looks like a boat, but then with like a <laughs> rocket on it. This <laughs> pardon me because I really need to my and Oh, um, amazing. So um, after China has learned um, a lot of um, skills and how to make machines to uh, independently make something of their own. So was great. It's also said that these are very advanced technology. Thank you so much. And um, very cool, and that's a very um, I was also very amazed when I was researching on the museum to come from the primeval age, the Neolithic age. I think in this area we were wanting to to tell China. So first of all, we were talking about this one, right? In 1950, uh -huh. the land law was reassured. So let's come here. Mm -hmm. In 1950, mm -hmm. the land law was uh, reassured, and uh, you know that Chi People's Republic of China was re uh, established in 1949. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And uh, 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 before the land law was issued, the lands belonged to landlords and mm -hmm. farmers uh, worked very hard for them to earn meager income to live on. But wow. uh, after it, the liberated farmers had their own land. Oh, I understand. So the People's of, uh, Republic of China established in 1949, and one year after the founding of the People's Republic, the government has reformed land, land mm -hmm. reform, and back in the days, for thousands of years in China, even though the farm plot their land, but they don't own the yes. land. The landlord owns them, and it's not really fair for the farmers, so the government gave the land back to the farmers. And in here, it is a really, a yeah. little bit, oh, yeah. this one as yeah, well. I one. forgot this one. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about this one, Dreamy. Uh, this one is, uh, uh, it recreates the Xinxian County of Henan province. Uh -huh. It's a cradle of people's commune. Oh. Uh, it is actually an agricultural cooperation organization, mm -hmm. and in it, people work together, they ate together, mm -hmm. they earn the same money. Oh, I, mm -hmm. I remember. So after a few years, um, people started like a co-op, co -op and they earn the same money. But also, it doesn't sound very fair, because what if this person is more able and work more, but this person has a weaker body, or maybe a little bit um, maybe a little bit unable to work and I think in here it's rather it's a little bit dark but it tells a very important story in the history of Chinese agriculture development. Tell us about this. It's a reform of mm -hmm. the people's, com people's commune. Uh, these 18 people they abolished uh, that people's commune system and they decided to start a new working principle means oh. wor uh, distribution according to one's work. Ah, oh, so mm -hmm. now, um, oh, and you can see the stamps, footprints, so the, yeah. oh, fingerprints oh, right fingerprints here. Fingerprints. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's okay. <laughs> 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 it will be even bigger than this. Yeah. <laughs> Finger, fingerprints right here. There's more to say to about this topic. Mm, in 2006, China Agricultural abolished the agricultural tax, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and the scene shows us a man mm -hmm. named Wang Sanyi. He made a. a, 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 a 
Wow. But, uh, it is happiness. Yes. We're saying goodbye. Hello everyone and welcome back to our stream brought to you by China Media Group. We are very, very sorry about the technical issues. This is a gigantic museum and we want to show you all the things that we can offer. And before, if you remember, we were talking about land tax and land reform and we were talking about a very cool looking uh, tea steaming machine uh, that we have learned from Japan. All of these amazing farm machines or farming tools that are now in use in China. I can see already on top there's a drone that is being used to spray pesticide and also to uh, do seeding in China. And I've actually visited a farm in northeastern China where um, I saw in real eyes how drone was doing farming. And Dreaming, could you please also pick some farm tools or machines that you want to introduce to us? Uh, this one is a multifunctional car ah. and uh, it can adapt to different terrains yes. uh, and do multi uh, undertake 
a different wow. kind of work. This yeah. is almost like a four-wheel drive, yeah. a four-wheel drive that is being tooled for farming. So good to see. Is there anything else that plane? Uh -huh, this uh, it, it is a model made on a scale of one to five, oh. and uh, it was used in 1983 mm -hmm. and uh, from it we can see that plant that plant also used to spray pesticide but it needs pilot ah mm -hmm. so before we need to use a pilot you can see the um, shadow or the reflection of the plant on the backdrop and it really looks like a plant is um, doing the seeding but with a man uh, pilot but nowadays you can use a drone to do it as well mm. so many of advanced farm machines and really can see the differences between back thousand of years ago to now telling you about in real contrast the development of the machinery in China's agriculture so and I want to see this is my little friend <laughs> It's a I'm yellow, cute car. Yeah, a very cute. This is like a bumblebee. Tell us about the the car, Dreamy. Uh, it's it's a car used for spraying pesticides mm -hmm. to fruit trees. Oh. And nowadays, fruit trees are cultivated uh, yes. more shorter. Oh, shorter! Uh. Amazing. Uh -huh. <laughs> I really love the color. And, and you can um, see the oh okay, yes. Yeah, so let's go and have a look at the back. These In are the back. some uh, spring here these are some sprinkler oh. uh, in the back and uh -huh. uh, they can uh, spray pesticides evenly and mm -hmm. admirably mm. Ooh, so good to know so nowadays um, China is doing a lot of reform um, in making the agriculture also modernize it and make science a huge and technology development a huge uh, in, uh, interest and priority in its agriculture so guys now all of the museum inside the indoor area is finished and I have some food for us to go and enjoy in the outside of the museum follow me Guys, the Agriculture Museum does not only have displays and exhibition halls, it also has a very nice outdoor area which we can't go, uh, we can't wait to go and have a picnic because we were talking about the differences in China, the differences in the north and south. In the north part of China, um, we grow buckwheat, a lot of buckwheat or wheat. Yes, and weather relatively dry and, and cold. That's right. Mm -hmm. The weather is relatively dry and cold. And in the southern part of China, it's warm and wet. Warm and wet. So we have rice or millets. Um, millets uh, are in oh, sorry, I North forgot. China. In North <laughs> China. I just got too excited about millets. <laughs> and actually, Dreamy and I are from the same hometown, home province, Jiangsu. Yeah. It's just sort of like sits in between north and south of China. Mm -hmm. So both of us, we are very lucky to um, be able to try from our childhood, um, enjoying both the good parts of um, south and northern China. So you can see behind is a really large lake with a lot of ducks. If we can go a little bit more to... Can we go? Oh, yay! <laughs> so let's go beside the lake where we can finish today's live stream. And I want to, Dreaming, could you please hold it for me? Okay. Thank you. Wow! So I want to show you guys <laughs> that I was, you were talking about millet. And this is a millet crackers that I prepared for you guys. Let's have a quick. <laughs> <laughs> Let me help you. Thank you. <laughs> yay! <Yeah. laughs> So millet, there you go. Thank you. Millet crackers. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> and let me offer it to Leah. Leah. And also in China, black rice is from North or South China. Rice. Mm, black rice. I think I, I've I seen it before in the paddy rice. Black I rice is a kind of paddy rice. Oh. Mm -hmm. So this is black rice congee that I have um, bought from the supermarket. Just to, to want to show you that all of the agriculture advances, all of the agriculture development has gone into our everyday food. And mm. ta-da! What's that? Xinke bing. Oh, Highland barley. Yes, Highland barley cake that I have bought from a um, restaurant yesterday and also 
Maybe a lot of you guys know about this, the Yinbang Hua Jue, that you can eat in China as well. So besides this beautiful lake with the actual farm products in hand, I want to say a big thank you first of all to Dreaming. Thank you so much. I have a really good dream tonight <laughs> after seeing you. And I want to say a big thank you to the China Agriculture Museum and to you guys who have been so open-minded and learning about China's agriculture history and development through the whole um, live stream. And in conclusion, I um, would really like to I would really like to say that um, I'm really encouraged by the technology advances that will be put in the next five years plan in China and I look forward to more interesting contents in agriculture in China. So here is Lucy from the um, China Media Group. This is Streaming from Agriculture Museum. We're saying bye to you in Beijing. Bye bye. See you.